All right, all right, all right, guys. We got about one minute and we're gonna kick it in gear here. Give everybody a chance to check in. Who wants to check in? Hopefully today goes uh, a little bit smoother than Wednesday. Uh, it took me five chapters to get my Beetle program in on Wednesday. Um, and look, man, interruptions and interweb problems, obviously that's the animal that I'm dealing with with live. So uh, I want to welcome everybody checking in. I see you guys coming in. That's great. Uh, my, my production engineer is not here today. I am solo and running on my own. So, so um, bear with me, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. I'm, I'm not going to try and catch up with everybody coming in. I can see you checking in, and I appreciate you. Appreciate each and every one of you. Guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Ryan Bridge. People call me the bug man. Uh, I am bringing to you a ton of cool bug fun. Let's call it two tons of cool bug fun today. Um, because man, stuff is going to get wild and I'm going to, and I know I'm going to run out of time. Uh, and again, I worry about the interruptions at the same time. So, so I want to try and move as, as fast as I can. And I'm sorry if I go too fast for you, but I got a lot of work to get done today. Um, most of all, I want to take everybody on a tour of the collection. And that also involves a little bit of running around the house, but I'm taking you with me anyway. So this is going to get, this is going to get, this is going to be an adventure. All right. Um, guys, if you don't know who I am, people call me the bug man. Um, I go to schools and churches and libraries and birthday parties and all kinds of cool places. And what I do, I go out and I teach people all about bugs and insects. Uh, this is what I do for a living, except, except usually I'm on location. I bring the tons of cool bug fun to you guys. Um, instead, now you guys have to come to me, which is a switch up, but I appreciate you guys. Honestly, I do. I appreciate each and every one of you for checking in. Um, we're going to try and make today just as fun as all the other days because um, this is a blast. All right, let's get down to, to, to nuts and bolts here because um, I need to get into something real quick. And this is going to get a little boring at first, and I'll apologize, but, but trust me, there's rewards at the end. Um, I want to talk about collecting versus the science of entomology um, because I think when people see a collection of 150,000 insects, I think they... I think, I think it boggles their mind a little bit to imagine that somebody actually went out and killed 150,000 insects. That is exactly up that already. Nope. Am I good? Am I good? I am good. Phew. That scared me. Um, so we go out and we collect insects and we have to do that. Um, that's, that's the only way you're going to acquire something like this. And I say that, you know, I say that respectively because there's other ways that I've acquired this collection besides just me going out into the field and traveling around the world and having tons of fun catching bugs. Um, everybody has a collector mentality somewhere built in them. And I don't care if you collect long and burger baskets or if you collect uh, f bird feathers or, you know, bugs or ball bearings. I don't care what you do. Um, we all have this weird collector mentality built in us and we like to have things and we like to keep things and we like to, you know, kind of, you know, dare I use the word hoard things, but we, we all do that. Um, and I got into bugs and insects at five or six years old, man. And at five or six years old, you know, everything I didn't have, I wanted to have. No different than a baseball card collector. No different, you know, than a shell collector. Uh, shout out to Harry. Um, no different, you know, than, than people that want to have things because they don't have them. Everybody, ha everybody gets into that. I definitely got into that. And for a very long time, I was, I was looking in National Geographic. Uh, I was watching David Attenborough and I was seeing all the cool bugs and insects all over the world. And I wanted every single one of those that I didn't have. That's, that's how this works. So um, I morphed out of that, though, over the years, because when I finally got the opportunity to start traveling, um, it was very expensive. I couldn't even afford to take some of the trips I went on, but I did it anyway. Um, but as you, as you build up your numbers and you realize that, one, you're limited on space and you're limited on, you know, how much can I really do? And then you, then you end up with a, a whole bunch of, you know, papered insects. Um, these are butterflies. These are two butterflies that are in here um, from all the way back in 1988. Um, <laughs> These are, these are butterflies that haven't seen the daylight since the day I collected them. 
Um, and it's a shame to have that stuff, but I run out of drawers, I run out of space, I run out of money, and I run out of time. Um, and and that's, that's one of the natures of this beast. Um, the, the old days of having your old high school collection and being done with it at the end of the year, when you have something like this, this is an every single day process of, of going through it and curating it and fumigating it and all the fun stuff that comes with that. And I'm not going to get real detailed on that, saving that for a whole different show. Um, but the collection that I have was built, uh, built around at first that need to have things. Then as I networked, as I got out there and I found stuff, um, then I realized I wanted to learn more about these things rather than just have it and keep it and appreciate it. And, you know, I wanted to learn about them. So then I started collecting things that really interested me. And I went, I went through a tiger beetle phase. Um, a lot of you can relate. Um, I went through, a Swallowtail butterfly phase, the Indra Swallowtail, shout out to Brian Orion, um, went through an, an Indra Swallowtail phase where I, I, I specifically targeted those. Um, I, I did that and I still do that now, but it's a whole different, whole different focus. So when, when you're collecting for rather the, the need to collect uh, versus the want to have these things, it's a whole different story. Uh, it's a whole different appreciation. I enjoy this hobby so much more now that I'm not just going out and vacking the rainforest. Um, it's important to point out that that you know the avenues that I took, the avenues, the opportunities that were offered to me to acquire this collection uh, were were innumerable um, over the years. I am just a super super blessed, lucky guy who has all the right people and phenomenally talented and knowledgeable people who have stepped up and helped me my whole life. Um, I don't have a, you know, a degree in entomology, so I can't claim that I'm an entomologist. I'm just a guy who really, really loves bugs and insects. Um, and, and with that in mind, I, I networked myself in, before it was even called networking, I networked myself in with museums and nature centers and universities. Um, that all started with the Young Entomologist Society. Shout out to Eric Eaton, because I know he was there with me. Um, Young Entomologist Society, and with the Young Entomologist Society based out of Michigan, Gary Dunn, wonderful guy, um, I actually networked through their directory, and I went into that directory, and I looked for specific people in specific places, uh, and I would highlight them, and then I would write them letters, because we didn't have email, we didn't have text messages. This is way before technology. This is old school stuff. And, and I would write letters to these people and I would say, you know, Hey, my name is Ryan Bridge and I love bugs and I'm in 4-H and look, here's a Polaroid. Remember the Polaroids? I would send them a Polaroid of my insect collection. And, and the cool part is, man, and this is where I think it really sealed the deal was every single one of those people that I wrote to didn't matter how big in the universe they were for bugs and insects. They all wrote back. Um, that is huge, man, to a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 12-year-old kid. That's a phenomenal thing. Um, and I stayed with Yes, and I kept networking and made great pen pals. David Alba, you know, is another one of those guys. He and I wrote letters almost weekly, I think. Um, but we did this for a long time, and I networked and got in real good with these people. And then I was given opportunities to, to go on collecting trips with people. And that's where things really get crazy, because... Uh, I'm going to short line this because I really want to get I really want to get to some of the other bigger, coolest stuff that I know you guys want to see. Um, look, when 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 people who run entomology departments and um, are major heads of those departments and uh, are are big names in entomology and are authors of books and and these these are big these are like superstars in the entomology world. When they start calling me, little no guy me in Pennsylvania, and inviting me to go on trips. Um, that's a game changer, man. And, and I said yes every time. I drove my parents absolutely crazy. I went through jobs like water because I would get a job and two weeks later I would get a phone call to go you know, anywhere. And I'm, talking, I'm not talking local, I'm talking big stuff. Baja, California and, and Kansas and you know, South America and Taiwan and, you know, just all over the world. Um, for, for 15 years, I did that and I bounced all over the world. And most of this stuff was, was all expense paid or most of my expenses were paid. It was a phenomenal era to be me. I was so lucky. Um, and, and it's a shame that a lot of these people have passed away now. So I can't even, I can't even really continue to appreciate them um, the way they deserve it. So... 
when you get done traveling the world in 15 years, uh, and you've you've hammered out about 18 countries, um, it's it's crazy. You end up with like 250,000 insects. And there's no way a little guy in Pennsylvania was prepared for any of that. But I wanted those things. I wasn't collecting for the bug man. I wanted those bugs. So I would bring suitcases full of bugs home. And they were all legal, man. It was all legal stuff because it was all dead. There was nothing CITES, nothing threatened, none of that stuff. And I was riding under university and museum permits. It was all totally legit stuff. Um, they would sign me on as a, uh, I was referred to as a lab technician. I was referred to as a technical assistant. I was referred to as a collecting assistant, um, all kinds of things. Not all of those trips were always bug focused, insect focused. I went on trips where I collected plants for people. I went on trips where I collected um, uh, soil, dirt. We went and did sand and soil samples. Um, you know, and again, I didn't even have an affiliation with these these places. I was just a guy who really loved bugs and really loved nature and, and was willing to stop and drop what I was doing and go and take advantage of this. Um, and they were coming to me mostly because back in those days, back in the olden days, they would get grant money from the government and they would have to spend that grant money. And if they didn't spend it all, they wouldn't get all that money later. So they would do everything they could. I went on trips where I saw people bring their wives and kids to trips to, to Africa and to <laughs> South America. Um, and it was on the, it was on the, the dime of whatever entity was, was, you know, fit in the trip. So, but they had to fill the plane seats and they had to, you know, they had to spend all that money or else they wouldn't get it later. They don't do that anymore. It doesn't work like that anymore. Now these guys got to go out there and they got to scrounge and clay, claw and bite their way to get a, just a little bit of money to take these research trips. So that's how it happens, man. You get a big, a big deal like this. That then turns into the opportunity for donations. Um, I started donating mass quantities, you know, the thousands and thousands of insects out. Um, at the same time, all of that was happening. Um, one of the guys I'd network with out in San Diego, great guy, Lee. Um, I'm going to keep it at Lee. Um, he collected bigger than I did. He went more places than I did. He had twice the size collection that I did and nobody knew about it. Again, pre-internet, all this stuff. And Lee tried to donate his collection to uh, the San Diego Natural History Museum and David Faulkner was running it back then and David Faulkner couldn't take his collection. It was too big. It was too big of an animal to take in. He didn't even have, Becky Watts I think back then was the only person he had running, you know, helping him curate the whole deal. He just couldn't take on another two or three hundred thousand insects in one shot like that. So Lee calls me one day and he says, hey, if you want, if you want my collection, come get it. It's in the garage and I have everything opened up. It's fumigating. I'm getting all the mothballs out of it, you know, and, and letting it, you know, air out so it doesn't stink up my parents' house. So right away I cut deals and I, I made some arrangements and I got an all expense paid trip out to California uh, where then I met a buddy of mine and, and, uh, and we drove the collection across country back home. That double if not tripled what I already had. It also gave me the cabinets, it gave me the drawers. Everything you see came from that one person. Super, super lucky. That's how this happens, man. Um, so all I've done over the years is I donate out, I build collections, I have a rental collection back here that, I, that I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. Um, now, the collection itself, the drawers, pretty simple stuff. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna go on a walking tour. I've, sorry, I'll try not to leave the scene. Um, give me an idea just just what's in here. Uh, find something a little bit bigger. Now, these are all small stuff. Oh, there we go. We'll look at some crickets. Okay, the drawers, these are crickets. You know, most people have seen crickets. Sorry about the glare, but I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave that glass on for just, just for the time being, all right? These are crickets, just a drawer full of crickets and a couple Katie did's, all right? But you understand, the drawers are built for the cabinets. They slide in or out. The drawers are almost, not quite, but they're almost airtight. And the cabinets then, when you drop that front lid on, the cabinets will seal up as well. So the cabinets are made just for this kind of thing. They protect the insects really, really well. Keeps them cool. It keeps them dry. And most of all, it keeps them in the dark as much as possible. Those are the, those are the three big keys. And the final key then is a fumigant. And I like to use a little bit of pest strip, or if I don't have that available, I just use a moth ball or some moth crystals. And I put a little soda cap full of moth crystals in every one of these drawers. That's 380 drawers I got to do that to now and then. Um, house might get a little smelly when I do that. Um, so you understand, 
We're talking about a massive collection. Now, what is here right now? Here is some of the rental collection. Back there is some of the rental collection. Um, the rental collection is comprised of 12 cabinets. Um, it holds three of these drawers each. And then I usually compose, you know, comprise a few extra drawers with it in case there's breakage or they need replace bugs, whatever. Um, those go out to museums, science centers, um, anybody who's willing to rent that for sometimes long periods of time, six, eight months sometimes. That goes out to those entities. Um, they keep it on display. Uh, that's a really cool deal. It just, right now, obviously, things are all shut down, so nothing's happening with that. But let me take you on a quick tour, man. This is going to get interesting because I want to I make sure I get everybody into this. We're going to go for a walk. You get to come with me for a walk. All right, so just get you in the cabinets. Get rid of those things. The cabinets. Um, everything from everything from dragonflies, um, damselflies. Uh, they can hold. Uh, there's tiger beetles. All right, there's my tiger beetles. I forgot I had those in here. Um, there might be bees and wasps. We talked a little bit about those the other day. Okay, if we go over here to the rental collection. The rental collection is pretty cool, and I'll pop the drawer off. I'll let you see what this looks like. So you, you basically just turn these things, and the drawer comes right off. And then in there would be, I don't know, what do we, what do we, what do we want to see? There's some sulfurs, all right? A bunch of sulfurs. The yellows and the whites, the periods. Cool stuff. Um, there's some morphos, all right? This is all comprised in a rental collection. And you'll see gaps in here, and that's where I've taken stuff out. Uh, for other causes, because keep in mind, man, I build a lot of I build a lot of collections for people. Um, I'm getting I get hired for commission to build uh, custom made collections for a lot of people. So here's the cabinets for the rentals. They're gonna stand upright on the wall like that, and they hold they hold three drawers each. Uh, they have lights in the top and bottom. Very cool stuff. Um, there's the other one. The third cabinet for the rental collection is over there. Let's do a quick run upstairs because I don't want to run out of time before we get to go see the official. Bugman room. Um, quick to point out, if you come in my house, welcome to my living room. If you come in my house, um, people who don't know me aren't going to know that I aren't going to know that I collect insects. They're probably not really going to know that. I don't put insects all over the walls. I have a real bad problem with get you out of the, bl the glare. I have a real bad problem with insects fading. I like a lot of sunlight. I like to keep the uh, the light in the, the house nice and bright. So my bugs that I put up on these walls. Are gonna fade out real quick because sunlight does that so I try not to put any bugs on the walls try not to kind of force feed the fact that I do this on people because when we get to the bug man room that's kind of worth that's kind of worth noting this is the bug man room okay so let me get some lights so what we're looking at, guys, again, let's try it without lights. Let's see if I can get better without lights. A little bit better without the lights right now. I'll turn some lights on in a minute. What we're looking at, all right, uh, total cabinets, my collection, I have 18 of these big cabinets. The cabinets themselves hold 20 drawers each. Um, if I were to turn these back on and keep you out of the glare, we're going to open this cabinet up. Uh, most of that, I think most of you folks are probably familiar with this one. This is one you see on the internet all the time. I put this out there. A lot of my marketing and stuff for that display. But in this cabinet is pretty cool because what I've done is I've organized things in a way that I keep like when I'm doing programs or I'm doing larger events, I keep all of my promo. You'll see a lot of stuff labeled promo. I keep all my promo displays right up here in the front because it's easier just to put them in the boxes and shoo them out the door, scoot them down the steps. So when we get into the promo cabinets, this gets, this gets fun really quick. Um, there's going to be tons and tons of insects. Watch this. We're going to drive down through here real quick. See what, oh, there's a good, there's a good one right there, man. All right. And if there's glare, I apologize, but I'm not going to be taking glass on and off all day long. I just don't have time in the day to do that. Uh, there's some local stuff. There's some in invasives and some cool things. There's a Dobson fly I get questions on all the time. Um, that's a good drawer when I'm doing local native stuff. There's a nice drawer full of grasshoppers. 
shoot down here. Oh, there's the beetle one from the other day. That's cool. There's the Chrysinas I was talking about. This is just some. This isn't the big drawer full of them, but this is a nice collage. There's even stuff in here from China. Guys, I've never been to China, but people donate bugs to me. And if they donate bugs, I try to use everything they give me. Um, those are beautiful, though. Beautiful blue scarab beetles. Um, there's the dung beetles also from the other day. Uh, the longhorn beetles from the other day. That's pretty cool. All right. There's a nice box. There's a nice, nice collage of big, huge beetles. Hopefully you guys can see that good because I, I can't see too well. Let me, uh, let me try something. Let me wing this. Uh, I am going to try and turn you guys around. There we go. Hey, all right. All right, so there's a heliconid display. This is just in a one cabinet. Imagine, man, I, I, 380. Oh, there's morphos. That's a good one. 380 drawers like this. And, and I've got boring stuff, too. Don't get me wrong. They're not all, you know, wow, big, crazy. Oh, there's a bird wings. Uh, all wow, big, crazy stuff like this. But I have some normal, normal bugs and insects, too. But... What this does is gives me the opportunity to at least grab stuff, go quick. There's some more bird wings. These guys are out of Malaysia and Philippines. Cool stuff. Uh, there's some satirids. Check it out. You see the glass wing butterflies that you see on the internet? Right there's some glass wings. Right there's some glass wings. Clear wings. There you go. Now you can see them good. They have clear wings, a little bit of dash of color just to attract the girls. These guys don't have the clear wings, but they definitely have some color. Beautiful, beautiful. These are Danaids. These are cool. These are related to the Monarch. How neat is that? Now check it out. Quick note on this. They're related to the Monarch, but you notice what color they are. I noticed when I went to Asia the first time that, that almost everything in Asia is weirdly, um, it's black and white. Um, and then I realized that a lot of their snakes and a lot of their stuff is black and white. Um, Unlike here in the, you know, the Western Hemisphere, our main toxin poison colors are orange and red and yellows. When you get over to Asia, uh, the black and whites are, are the toxic colors. These are, these are effectively monarch butterflies. They're, they're toxic to birds. And you notice they all go to that same black and white. And there's a lot of beetles and a lot of insects that use black and white colors over in the Orient and over in Asia because of that. Uh, these are a little bit of collage. Most of this stuff is out of South America. Some of this stuff is out of Taiwan. A lot of fun in there. And, ooh, there's a good one. There's a nice swallowtail. All right, that's a collage of Africa. And uh, those are Australian. And no, I was never in Australia either. So that was a big good example. Those probably came from Lee. Not that, I don't think he ever went to Australia. So he might have gotten those by trading, or he might have even bought those. I don't know, but I don't buy and sell bugs unless I uh, go rescue them from the eBay vultures in an auction. All right, so you understand, I want to move on here because we got other stuff to look at. Uh, I'll give you a quick tour of the bug man room. Those are up there just to look cool. Those do not normally stay there. Um, I cleaned up the room pretty good this morning, and I just put those up there just to get them out of the way because normally they're just sitting on a shelf here. Um, you get a good look at those. I'll slow things down a little bit and maybe not make you all seasick. All right, um, coming over here to live bugs. Pretty simple stuff. Um, if you remember, I mentioned I had a couple cages. I have a cage of cocoons in the basement that I use in the studio. I have a cage of cocoons in the garage uh, that keep it nice and cool and uh, or warm, whatever is doing outside. And then I keep these up here. Um, and these are up here to <laughs> sort of get warmed up and they will start hatching and emerging early, hopefully. And then I can start using those in programs. Maybe, um, you know what I mean by that. So we'll... We'll get back to that someday too. All right, this is Penelope. Everybody loves Penelope. All right, notice how simple I keep things, guys. All right, I'm not gonna get into big details. I'm just gonna say that, you know, we there's a lot of people out there with bugs who are, who are making it a lot harder than they have to. This, this is Roxy. Roxy's nice and big. She's a backup when uh, whenever Penelope's either molted or whenever Penelope uh, is, 
is off gallivanting elsewhere, or if I'm just doing so many programs I don't want to wear down Penelope, I'll bring Roxy out instead. But nine times out of ten, it'll be Roxy or it'll be Penelope that's with me. Um, this one doesn't even have a name. This is my Arizona Brown or Arizona Blonde. I'm sorry, and she has been really, really nervous lately. See how her her abdomen is all scraped bald. Uh, I don't know why that is, but that's just what she does. That's what tarantulas do when they get real nervous, which is good. When I see my rose hairs, you realize they're really, really fluffy and beautiful. No nervousness going on there. They're just chill. Uh, these are my hissing cockroaches. And look, man, I keep the boys separate from the girls. Because if you don't do that, you end up with a lot of cockroaches. And I refuse to be overwhelmed by cockroaches. I like them, but not that much. <laughs> all right. Um, these are all... Uh, essentially Kevin's, but they're not. They're they're Kevin and Jeffrey, and I'm not even sure which is which because I put them in here and didn't think to look about it. But I got Kevin and Jeffrey, and I got another one here that the, uh, my son has not named, and then a brand new one I bought about a month ago at the uh, expo that they were they were re these were super cheap at the expo, so I grabbed one. Um, and these are backup, is what they are. Okay, I'll have Kevin, whichever one is Kevin. I'll have Kevin out on the road with me. This is cool. Check this out. This is the desert hair. Check him out. I'm trying not to make him glow too bright that he actually wigs out the the video. Notice how they glow. Scorpions glow under ultraviolet light. And the more direct I put it on him, the more he glows. He just lights up like a light bulb. It's very cool. This guy comes out of Arizona. There's another one right here. I'll light him up too. He's hiding. He's in a... Yeah. He's chill. This guy's chilling out now too. Um, and of course... Yep, there he is. Kevin lights up as well. So... That would be Kevin. Come out here and say hi to everybody, buddy. There he is. And Kevin is pretty cool. All right, but you see they light up. UV light has cool effects on bugs and insects. They like it. They view the world through it. Um, I keep things very simple. The the desert hair, you know, the desert hair scorpions get a little, you know, a little better digs. Um, but I don't really need to do that. I could get, I mean, look, I mean, he's got all this cool stuff over here, but he hides right there in a the corner. So he doesn't even utilize that stuff. Um, this guy does though. He, he stays under there pretty much all the time. Um, small scorpion in here, the bark scorpion. And then I've got some death feigning beetles in here and I'm not going to get them out and disturb them. They're actually eating right now. So uh, I got death feigning beetles hanging out in there. And these guys are just darkling beetles out of Arizona and they come with me to programs and such too. So back to the collection, because this is a collection tour and I'm running out of time. Oh, I almost forgot about these. And here are the beetles. Um, <laughs> remember we talked about the Hercules beetles and how I keep them in dirt and uh, watch this. Oh, there's one. <laughs> there it is, guys. They bury themselves in the dirt. They eat the dirt and the rotted oak that's in there, the, the compost that's in there built around the uh, rotted oak. And they eventually get really big. Uh, I've got little ones in here as well that aren't quite big yet. Check that, look at that difference. <laughs> That's awesome, okay? But I just cover them up, kind of set them and forget them and let them do their thing. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, another month or three, I'll have some adult beetles. All right, um, give you an idea again. We're talking a total of 18 cabinets 20 drawers each. Uh, we're in the bug man room. This is a spot that did have two cabinets. I moved these two down to the studio so I would have more room. Um, this is my in progress um, thing. This is where I do most of the work. Um, and this is, I call this in progress because just about everything in here is some sort of project I'm in the middle of. Um, it might be, in this case, I'm getting ready to put together another mimicry box where I'm going to be uh, doing a real nice mimicry display. Um, there's some 17-year cicadas that are all built up on a branch. Um, cool stuff like this. I mean, this is, this is a nice thing about doing what I do is I don't, I, I'm not in a, I'm not in a box. Look at these guys. I'm not in a box. I'm not trapped by uh, parameters that tell me what I can and can't do. Essentially, I do what customers ask me to do. Um, got dead leaf butterflies, the Kalimas, Oh, we got these really cool. I'll see if I can get in close on these. Look at the camouflage on, I think those are Noctuids. They're uh, Neo Carnegias. So I'm not sure, but they look like a Noctuid, but who knows? They're just cool. They could be an hookworm too, but they look almost, almost like a, uh, almost like a tiger moth, maybe an Arcteid. But either way, check it out. Those are clear 
spots. Those are, that's not white or silver. Those are clear spots on the wings. You can see right through those wings. And they're made to look like, you know, decomposing leaves. But how amazing are those? And you've got some undersides of two butterflies that are, you know. And, and this is stuff that's waiting. This is stuff that I have ideas for projects that I'm doing. Um, this whole cabinet is built around that. These are all local Eastern beetles, Pennsylvania beetles. Um, what happens, guys, is I get, I get requests for collections. And it might be a state park. It might be a nature center. And when they, when they request you know, when they request that stuff, I need to have things on hand. So I use the resources I have. I rarely have to go out and catch and kill things anymore because I have so much either sitting in drawers or still sitting in paper. Uh, makes it super, super cool. Um, some of these, I don't know what I'm going to get into here. So I might, hopefully I don't open something that's gross. Um, these are, I'm working on uh, Africa butterflies. Um, the summer camps this year, two or three of the summer camps this year, we're going to do an Africa theme. And I don't know if that's just something summer camps do together or not. But I got requests. They were doing Africa themes. So I started mounting up a whole bunch of Africa butterflies in preparation for those summer camps. Well, now here are all my displays in works. And now those, those summer camps are all canceled. So at least I got a bunch of really nice displays uh, out of the deal um, and those will come in handy I get more people let's run down here real quick um, show you some more wow bugs that I know you guys can appreciate because you know if you're gonna come look at the bug man collection you might as well look at the fun stuff because there's a lot of boring stuff up here too but I don't want to get too deep into that because we're running out of time really fast um, these are the large silk moths um, and by large uh, we're talking large guys we're talking big stuff these are atlas moths. Let me pull this one all the way out. Look at that. That's my hand. These are atlas moths. And you'll see cocoons. A lot of this stuff has been reared over the years. Which is very cool. There's one out of Africa. That's not even a, an, an atlas moth per se. But it looks like one I threw it in there because it looks cool. Because you know why? Because nobody tells me I'm not allowed. So I can do that. Um, there's Rothschildias. These are probably some of my favorites, man. I've collected these, uh, collected these in lots of different places in the Southwest. Beautiful little moths with those big clear windows in the wings. You see right through those spots. Sorry, trying to get, there you go. Very, very cool stuff. Let's run down here. We'll see some other cool stuff. Uh, there's, there's another drawer of Atlas. The big old Atlas moths. There is, oh look, more Atlas moths. These are obviously reared as well. Um, and you see there's, there's nothing up here because I, I probably had three or four more up here. I take from my resources and I build displays for the people working for me because some of you probably don't realize I've got two people locally, Craig and Martin, working for me. And I also have uh, Bugman Steve out in Arizona doing, doing programs for me. So we got Tucson and, and Phoenix covered, man. How cool is that? Check this out, man. Here's your Hercules moths. These are officially, to the best of my knowledge, these are the largest moths in the world. Two males and a female. And the rumor is, and I totally buy into it, the rumor is that the, the males, because they do the majority of the flying, the males have those tails, and this also falls into the, the Luna moths, and we're going to look at those in a minute too. The males have these long tails because it helps to deter bats. Makes it harder for the bats to you know, swing in and come up behind them and eat them. Breaks up their pattern a little bit, I think, for the bats too. So that's nature doing its thing. Uh, these, are, these are Luna moths, but not from here in Pennsylvania. These are uh, talking Africa and Asia and Malaysia. Very cool stuff. And you see how they're all set up. You know, obviously these are set up, you know, not taxonomically. They're, th this collection this collection lost its taxonomics a long time ago, man. As soon as I started breaking it up and donating it and doing things. I even had it databased for a little while and I couldn't even keep up with that because I was moving stuff in and out so fast. Uh, there's some at, there are, uh, some some more Luna Maws coming. These are the ones right here in the, in the U.S. These are the ones out of Pennsylvania, matter of fact. And obviously weird. And then these guys are out of Asia, Taiwan. There's some stuff from, check that one out. Way cool. All right. Let's drop down another drawer. Oh, look, North America. So we'll call it Eastern because I don't think there's anything here from the Western U.S. But this is a drawer that I use regularly in programs. Uh, these are all Eastern U.S. moths. And you know what, guys? 
these live in your backyards. If you live on the east side of the Mississippi, you can get probably everything in here. You might have a hard time getting a buck moth right there, but you can probably get everything else um, right in your backyards. These, this is what flies your backyards at nighttime. Put up lights. And this is a cool kind of stuff you're going to get. Um, there's a polyphemus even. Uh, this is, breaks down into, there's a little bit of taxonomics going on here, but not much. Again, I broke this apart a long time ago. Um, there we go. People like Brian Orion and Matthew, you guys can appreciate some of these because these are right up your alley. These are right out of your neighborhoods. These are some of the Western ones. And then there's a Securif for um, Vernon hooked me up with some of those. Uh, I've also collected them years ago, but he hooked me up with some really nice ones. Uh, Vernon Brew down in Louisiana. So super, super nice. So you notice, I mean, I, I pick up stuff. Um, I get donations. I don't ask people for bugs usually. They, these are people who stepped in and sent me bugs for all the right reasons. Sometimes they send me bugs and insects because they know I want to uh, do mounting workshops. And we will do one of those. I'm going to mount some bugs with you guys one of these days. Um, and we also, you know, I also... Uh, do these educational programs. So if people can't step in and literally hands-on get involved with my programming, they help where they can. And and Bob Belmont, I see you there, buddy. Um, Bob also threw some bugs at me too. So it's all good. Um, lots of people stepping up and helping me do this. These are the Cynthia moths. Um, amazing. The That one right there is obviously a reared, uh, which was cool because that was from a collected female. And that is like... Uh, that's kind of like, uh, I think Dave Moskowitz described that as the holy grail of Saturnin moths. Um, the rest I got, uh, I think that one came from Lee's collection. This one I think I was given as a, a cocoon and I think I hatched it out. And uh, that one I want to believe was also given by Lee. It looks faded, so that's kind of an old one. It probably came from Lee's collection. But either way, you get the idea lots. It just goes on and on. Look at the tails. Look at the tails on these copiatrix. These, these, these are... Phenomenal. Look how long the tails get. <laughs> how could you not appreciate this? Look, that's my hand. They're not a really huge moth, but they got these super long, you know, eight, six, eight inch tails that are just phenomenal. And uh, and this, it just goes, the collection just goes on and on and on, guys. It just, there's a, there's a skip drawer. This is a drawer that I, uh, these are unsorted. Uh, they're not even named except for the little dwarf Cecropia and my neat little dwarf Black Polyphemus, courtesy of Nathan. Um, super nice guy. Um, it just it just goes on and on. Let me see if I can uh, dig us into other fun stuff real quick, because I think we're probably already out of time, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm having too much fun with you guys, so let's play. All right, let's go over here. We'll look at some, uh, let's run over here. We'll look at some swallowtails. Uh, this gets scary at first, because right here is a good example. Um, these were acquired at an auction, and I don't, typically go and buy bugs. I just don't like to do it. Um, but at an auction, I will, because if not, then the eBay vultures scoop them all up and then they just get, then they just get used and abused and sold uh, out to people who I don't think would get near the amount of enjoyment out of them that my audiences are gonna get. So I can use these in educational displays. I can use these in educational programming. And these are all, they're all extra. They're waiting for a good cause and I can I can relax those out and remount those so even if they're mounted poorly they can be remounted really easily here's another one same idea these were all collected at the same auction um and I don't do that often but every now and then I get motor there's that's a that's a drawer nice drawer of bird wing butterflies super super stuff beautiful butterflies and when I worked at Butterfly World, I was actually able to rear some of these back in the 80s. I worked at uh, Butterfly World down in Florida and was working in their lab and was able to rear a lot of this stuff. So it's neat to see this stuff. And even when I saw some of these things flying around at one point, uh, that was uh, in, in some cases before I was working at Butterfly World. But in other cases, okay, let's up down here all the way to the bottom. Uh, and bugs and bugs and bugs. Uh oh, getting into Brian Orion's territory now. A lot of anise, a little bit of organ. Matthew can appreciate that. That is in nobody's neighborhood unless you live in Taiwan. Uh, there's some South America and a little bit of Africa going on. Just goes on and on and on. Parietes, these guys are awesome. These guys are coming out of South America. 
One of my favorite butterflies in South America because there's so many varieties of them. And they are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. To see those in the sunlight is just, just phenomenal. These are kite swallowtails. Uh, that's a good one out of PNG. Um, guys, I've never been to Papua New Guinea. So if you see anything from Papua New Guinea in a collection, it is not mine. I did not collect it. It probably came from Lee. To my knowledge, he was there at least once, probably twice, knowing him. Uh, more swallowtails. Ah, there we go. Eastern swallowtails. Get into some fun. Uh, there's also some Western stuff hiding in here. Um, there's the three-tailed swallowtail. I don't know how many people can claim to have one of those from Arizona, but guess what? I got one. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Favorite, favorite, favorite. I love that. Um, and then I got some dwarfs. I have a thing about dwarf insects. I really, I mean, you know... <laughs> I mean, right, right there is your average size, and right there is that little guy. So it's a dwarf, man, and I, uh, I dig those. So a little aberrants, a little oddities like that. Here we go. There's Brian Ryan. This is Keep screaming your name, buddy, because uh, you can dig these. These are your, these are your Indra swallowtails. Um, it's a nice series of Indras right there. So you can definitely appreciate those because I know you get into those, and you, they're right in your neighborhood, so you get to see those all the time. And another series of just collage, some Africa and some South America. So just broken up a little bit. All right, we'll push all those back in. All right, guys. So what it comes down to is, you know, we all have, we all have a reason to collect. All right. Um, I'm going to turn this thing back around real quick. Look, we, we all have reasons to collect and, and keep stuff. Um, whether you do it because you're just addicted to having those things um, or you're, you know, you're under that mentality that because that you, you don't have it, you have to. Or you're doing it for research or you're doing it for education, in my case. Um, look, don't beat up guys for, for catching and killing bugs and insects. Uh, you, we can't keep all this stuff alive. We're, we're going to learn a lot more from, from dead insects in the long term than we ever will from you know, a week or two of keeping a bug alive. Um, you know, there's so much more that you can do when you have these things for long periods. Um, if I were to try and keep all these insects, uh, they're never going to look as good and as, I mean, look how, how perfect these things are. They're never going to look that good if I were to try and keep these butterflies alive and wait till they die on their own. That isn't how this works. We have to get them fresh. We have to get them in good condition and we kill them. And that is just, that is the nature of the beast of being an insect collector. Uh, we accept those terms. Um, it's what you do with them afterwards. You know, if you you know if you have too many sitting around in boxes and haven't haven't got their chance to be out there yet, that's not a good thing. I'm not real proud of that. Um, I, I'm working on it. Uh, I just ordered two more cabinets, so I get two more cabinets coming. That'll leave me 20 cabinets. Um, I got to do what I got to do. So um, you understand, all right? Don't don't beat us up because we're killing bugs and insects. There's 10 quintillion insects on this planet. And what you've seen just in this room is not a drop in the bucket compared to what is out there. Nothing in this room is rare. Nothing in this room. Well, some of the bird wings. <laughs> some of the bird wings might be considered rare now, but they're, they're farm raising those, and those are available on the internet most places now anyway. Um, you, can, you, can, you can openly buy those from a lot of breeders. So, so not, not a big deal. Um, these things, even if they were uh, you know, hardcore rare and endangered you know you don't see a whole drawer of regal fritillaries I, I don't i have two one i collected and the other one i was given from the, the drexel academy they gave me one on a trade so um e go easy on us for catching bugs we're, we're doing it for all the right reasons uh, and i want to just emphasize that because i know i know bug collectors take a big you know take a lot of heat for that all right guys um, if there's anything else you're really interested in, we're going to take another tour. We can do that some other day. I'm running out of time. I'm probably way over time because I haven't looked at a clock. Um, I want to get you guys back on your day. I hope you got an idea of what's going on in the bug man world, in my bug man, you know, room, uh, where I, where I make all this cool stuff happen. If you like what you see here, you know, if you dig this, if you like what I do, go on my website, Ryan, the, <laughs> I do that every time. Okay, ryanthebugman.com, ryanthebugman.com, very simple. Go on the website, hit up the contact page, tell me how you feel, tell me what you think, 
and we'll get it done. Hit me with your questions. Um, Monday's program, I'm not even sure what I'm doing yet. Um, it's going to be recorded, so it doesn't really make that much difference. I'll make an announcement over the weekend. I'll let everybody know what I'm doing on Monday. Um, it's going to be 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 a.m. Pacific, as always, every Monday, every Wednesday, every Friday. I'm going to bring to you guys a ton of cool bug fun. All right, guys, I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a good time. I hope I didn't make everybody seasick. Um, I'll get better at this as we go along. All right, guys, it's all good. It's all wonderful. Be well, guys, be well and be kind. Let's all be kind to each other out there. It's an angry world right now. All right, take care, guys. Love you. See you, bye.